try and capture the here and now, try to measure the here and now. The here and now is a, a, an arising and a self-releasing of a constant flow of data. We have thoughts, we have emotions, we have sensations, there's sights, there's sounds, smells, memories, thinking about the future, pleasant descriptions, neutral descriptions, unpleasant descriptions. You see, all of this is just streaming in the here and now. We cannot find an actual location of all of these data points that are just streaming in open intelligence inseparable from open intelligence. So the here and now is a spontaneously self it's spontaneously self-releasing. It's purely beneficial. It's the beneficial flow of open intelligence. Conventionally, this has not been our experience though. We've been trained and we've taken on this training to apply a label of either positive, negative and neutral to everything that is streaming. So we have something unpleasant that arises and we start applying a label to it from what we've been training up. So a negative label. And then when something comes up that feels negative, it just... We have four choices in that moment. The conventional choices and what we've been doing is indulging in it, creating more of a story around this unpleasant data, or we can avoid it or we replace it. We avoid it so that we don't have to experience it, or we try to replace it so that the negative description somehow feels more positive. So this is what we've been doing. It's, a, it's controlling the flow of the data that arise and release spontaneously anyway. It's trying to control descriptions that they don't need to be controlled. It's like trying to rearrange space, taking this part of space, trying to polish it up to make it look like this space, or try to push it away, or gather more of this kind of space. So that's just, uh, when we indulge, avoid, or replace, it results in more and more tension, confusion, frustration, ups and downs. You know, we might accumulate a lot of positive data streams, circumstances, and we feel on top of the world. We must have got all of our ducks in a row. We ticked all the right boxes because everything feels great and peachy. And then something happens and we feel depressed. We're anxious. We're worried. We're angry. And then we wonder, what happened? What did I do wrong? I must not have controlled my data properly. I must not have been emphasizing enough positive, I must have been engaging in too much negative, or maybe it was my past karma, or maybe it was because I said this to that person when I was a young person, or whatever. We have all kinds of reasons, all this cause and effect relationship going on that we feel is controlling the here and now. So when we take a short moment of open intelligence and just let that whole array of the streaming data be exactly as it is, what we find is that the data self-release, they have no substance, or th their labels cannot really be pinpointed and located. We find that the data, the data are inseparable from this basic state of open intelligence. Without open intelligence, there would not be any of these descriptions. So what was most important for me to, to recognize, though, was when I relied on short moments of open intelligence, allowing my habitual need to describe everything be as it was, I felt more at ease. Just in that briefest of moment, I felt immediate benefit that I had never really felt so deeply before. And all of the things that I'd been trying to cultivate relief, confidence, compassion, whatever I was trying to cultivate. In that short moment, I felt just utter relief and benefit due to not trying to control the flow of data. So the practice in Balance View is short moments 
of repeating this recognition again and again and again until it's completely obvious. Short moments of relaxing the need to describe everything. Or short moments of resting body and mind completely. Short moments of... You know how when you've been working all day and you've completed all of your tasks and you know that feeling of completion and satisfaction. Just short moments of recognizing that felt sense. That's available whether or not you've finished your to-do list or not. So we see that the power and the immediate benefit of open intelligence is present in each here and now. It is not dependent on the data descriptions. It's not dependent upon whether or not we have positive data or negative data or neutral data. The beneficial potency of open intelligence, of reality, lies within all of the data. When they are left as they are, we recognize this more and more until it becomes certain, absolutely certain in our experience. For me, depression was something that it accumulated and I had all these descriptions that finally I labeled as depression. You know, I would wake up in the morning and have sensations that didn't feel nice. I'd have thoughts that were kind of dark and gloomy. And then my emotions throughout the day would be kind of grumpy, sour, whatever. And so then I just labeled all, well, this must be depression. I must be suffering from depression. So what can I do with depression? And this is what I was asking myself. Well, I need to change location. I need more sunshine. I need a better diet. I need better friends. I need more sex. I need less sex. I need... And on and on and on and on and on. And the description of depression just... And then any time I felt anything negative, it was, oh, I'm depressed. And that's just such a limiting way of, of viewing ourselves, of, of living reality, because we've been trying to control this flow of data that we, they just arise as they are anyway. So in this training, we're supported to gently yet confidently allow these data to be as they are. So for me, I stopped, in short moments, just stopped describing depression. When I felt the depressive sensation, I allowed it to be just as it was for a short moment. The thoughts the same, allowing them to arise and self-release. And then all of the emotions, choosing whether or not I wanted to indulge or avoid or replace them. And instead, I let them be as they were as well. Because I could see that if I continued to indulge, avoid, replace my thoughts, emotions, sensations, it would just be like running on a hamster wheel, having glimpses in front of me of some kind of relief, but then it just never being reachable, sustainable. So to get rid of the depression, I was reaching for antidotes. And then when I stopped reaching for antidotes, I started to see that there was a beneficial power within all of these descriptions that I was previously labeling as negative. I actually just started to experience that, and we can all experience that through this practice. Through relying on short moments of opening intelligence, rather than indulging, avoiding, or replacing. Through participating in the trainings, reading the texts, that confirm that our data are our beneficial potency, regardless of their description. We have hours and hours and hours of talks on the website, free to download. We have free books. We have trainings here in Goa every single day around the world through video conference at our centers around the world. So there are plenty of trainings that we can just come and listen and it becomes more and more our direct experience without efforting. We have the trainers in Balance who are more than happy to share their experience of what this has been like in their, in their lives. And then we have a worldwide grassroots community of people who are interested in empowering themselves rather than further disempowering themselves with all kinds of made-up belief systems, assumptions about what humans are and what humans should do. We come together and we allow data to be as they are and we naturally flourish. We get 
things done in a powerful and fun way. We influence those around us. We start to feel better about ourselves and better about everyone else. So these are just some of these practical everyday results that come about. And a lot of this is happening through non-symbolic communication, you could say. We don't need a lot of complication to experience the nature of reality, the beneficial potency of each here and now. We don't need words to communicate this. A lot of what happens here is just simply through a being together, through the instinctive recognition that What's looking through your eyes is the intelligence of the universe, of all universes. There is an instinctive recognition. The instinctive means we don't even need to think about it. We don't need to figure it out. Instinctively, we just know. But we need the introduction. We have to have had the introduction to open intelligence so that we can train up this instinctive recognition. This is what we're all doing together, instinctively training up to see that open intelligence is our fundamental identity, not just a human creature locked within a skin line with a collection of data. You know, we're so much more than that. What we really are is, the, is open intelligence. But growing up without hearing that, it it's not our direct experience initially. It hasn't been confirmed that our identity is open intelligence, vast and inexhaustible. So back to data. So we have moments where we're like, okay, maybe I am open intelligence. Maybe I'm actually starting to experience a bit of relief and I feel a little better about things. But then the stream of data just pours back in. What do I do with it? Well, remember the, the instruction of short moments of allowing it to be as it is. Data are outshone, and outshone, outshone means they just, the labels that we place on them lose interest. We're not so interested in calling everything positive, negative, and neutral. So like the planets and the stars in the sky are outshone by the sun. The sun, when by noon you can't see any planets and stars. But the planets and stars are still residing in the basic space of space. But they're just not noticed anymore. This is similar to the experience of outshining our data. The more we rely on open intelligence, the great sun of open intelligence, our data become less and less noticed. And we just, we're more spontaneously beneficial to ourselves and others. The moral obligations that we have to ourselves and others are just so evident and clear that we don't need to ruminate and worry and consider them in great depth anymore. They just become so obvious. What will be of greatest benefit to myself and to others? That has really simplified my approach to figuring out what is the right thing to do. I mean, the, you hear a lot about do the right thing. And it's like, well, what is the right thing? How do I know? You know by allowing all the data to be as it is and relying on open intelligence. Then we know what will be of most benefit to us, to the other person, to a great number of people. But it doesn't come about through rearranging, controlling the flow of data. That just complicates it, and clouds it up. And, you know, this is the same that we recognize whether or not we want to continue with antidotes. Asking yourself, what would be of greatest benefit to me if I continue smoking, for instance? Would that be of great benefit to me and others? Or do I have another option to clarify the urges and surges around antidotes. We can clarify any and all topics in this training through the Four Mainstays lifestyle, through the short moments, through the training, the trainer, and the community. So 
we have a platform to outshine all data into their beneficial potency. And then we're able to make these choices that are of great benefit to ourselves and others. And, um, it doesn't happen overnight. You know, it's, uh, we're doing this day by day, short moment by short moment. And many people here will share their experience of that, you know, how long they've been involved and how many talks they've been to and how many trainings they've participated in and, and just the, the immense value that people are receiving on a daily basis.